Hello everyone and welcome to the map 2000 Atmospheres. Warping in, in the upper right, the red Protoss, it is Prince. And spawning in the bottom left, the blue hatchery and drones belonging to Armani. Probe. Will he get the hatch block off? The important questions in these lovely Protoss versus Zerg matches. Zerg versus Protoss. We flip the tables, we flip the coin around, and sadly that drone is going to the third. Actually going to take the third too. We'll have to see if he pulls a rogue and cancels it or not. Unlikely, I'm feeling. Doesn't seem like it's going to be a, a dirty, cheesy opener from our Zerg player here. On the Protoss' side, things are looking a bit normal. The probe is just doing some harassment. Gonna get to see that spawning pool timing. Armani slightly struggling to keep the drones on the minerals here. Does it really matter in the long run? Or is it just to build up the stress and the tension that is fighting Protoss? What kind of PVZ will it be, guys? It honestly feels like PVZ kind of goes one of three ways right now. You're either seeing a Glaive Adept push, you're seeing a Ravager Bane push from the Zerg, or we go full-blown Sky Toss. Late game shenanigans. Really? Really, Probe? You're zapping? attacking the drones the amount of business that these drones have to put up with in this game it's just heartbreaking isn't it zerg players protoss and terrans just went no you have to kill the drones look at them what did that drone do to you he has a family too you know it's not very nice oh it is a stargate opener from the Protoss, who could have seen this coming? Who would have thought we would see such a atrocity, such a travesty? Third hatch is going to be taken. The real question is what's going to come out of that Stargate? Is it going to be Oracle, Void Ray, or Phoenix? I would love to see a Phoenix because that means we're having a little bit of an unusual start to the game. But realistically... It's probably going to be an oracle. Prince. Oracle. Alright. Oracle's good for scouting. Good for a little bit of drone harassment. The presence of queens can shut them down. But occasionally you get things like a good stasis trap in the mineral line. Or even a stasis trap at a choke point. Like right here, you put one down stops anything coming up that ramp. Very good against things like zerglings or roaches. Void Ray follow-up could be for hunting overlords. The adepts make their way across the map, start to do some shading. Queen's gonna respond shading backwards, so not going to go for any drone kills it looks like. Instead, just a little bit of scouting. Checks for that third hatch. He did see it. Saw it all done. Nice and healthy hatchery. The Oracle now going to be spotted by these two queens. Snipes off one, two, three drones. And going to get out. Beautifully done. Zergling from Armani gonna spot that third Nexus coming down. An interesting wall off here. Little susceptible to counterattack. Easier to get a surround. Void Ray can fight unopposed against the Zerglings, but it's not exactly efficient, is it? What's the response going to be from Armani? I'm keen to see that. Because usually, you know, there's a few things you can do when you're up against a Stargate opener. Do you go hyper aggressive? Maybe a Queen, Nidus. Do you go more economical, more late game focused? Take a fourth, take a fifth base, get a quick hive, get vipers. Or 
Do you go a more middle ground? Maybe you go for a spire off of three bases. Get mutas out to shut down the void rays to do some harassment. Have to wait and see. The bane nest on the way tells me it's probably not spire. Unlikely that you would get a baneling nest at the same time that your lair is finishing, if you're going to devote your gas to something like Mutas. Oh. Oh boy. Really? Three? Is it two? Two Stargates and a Fleet Beacon. He is getting the Robo too, which is a very telltale sign of a late game Sky Toss kind of style, because you do need things on the ground too. Well, it could be for observers, but you do need things on the ground too, like Archons, or Templar, or Disruptors. Um, Armani. Armani. Hydralisks are not a good answer versus Sky Toss. Hydralisks, we want them to be good. They're, they're such a cool anti-air unit and so iconic. Wow, that Overseer was decimated. Talk about wrong place at the wrong time. Um, yeah, he's going Carriers and he's going Hydras, which means, in theory, there should only be Carriers left after the battle. I wish Hydras were better. They're just not... They're just not. I mean, you, when you need something to take out air units primarily, early game, queens. Mid game, queens. Late game, maybe queens. Corruptors are pretty good too, though. Additional Stargate coming up for the Protoss here. Armani going to get a little bit of aggression going. He might be able to shut down this fourth base. Hydra timings are quite nice if you can get out before the Protoss air fleet is established. Unfortunately, the carriers are out and will protect this third base very nicely. Quick Hive coming up. Okay. Quick Hive. Good for Vipers. Could be for Lurkers. Lurkers are kind of nice too, but not usually up against carriers. Carrier Void Ray does kind of beat Lurkers, sadly, and few things do. Few things beat lurkers wholeheartedly, but I think Carrier Void Ray might be a good comp for it. More carriers, additional robo, and disruptors are on the way here. Hydra speed is not done, and it is just Hydras here. There's only two carriers though. He might even be able to take out the interceptors if he wants. Goes for the Void Ray, retreats from the Disruptor Shot, a good evasion. But the number of Hydras is dwindling. Was not able to cancel that base either, that hurts. Oh, resources lost slightly in favor of the Protoss. Didn't take out any carriers, didn't really take out much of the interceptors. I'm not sure why you would want to go back in with the same amount of hydras that you just retreated with, but what do I know? Maybe the distraction for the lings will prove more beneficial here. Good warp in. Few zealots. They are slow. Lots. Yes. Is there even a twilight? No. Who needs twilight? Upgrades? Charge lots? Please. Twilight Councils do not build carriers into ghosts. Why would I care about that? Ha! Carrier. Get it? Speaking of carriers, we're up to six. And uh, Prince is just going with the good old Protoss strat of I'm going to sit here and I'm going to make a lot of carriers. Which means it's going to be up to the Zerg to try and stop them. Armani is taking another base. I'd love to see maybe even another one slap down. Get five to six bases of gas. Is there a spire? There is no spire, which sounds to me like a fatal decision. He is getting pathogen glands. Neural? No neural yet. Neural's another option. It's more of an indirect option because if you can get neurals off on the carriers, you might be able to get carrier to kill carrier best counter sounds to me 
Vipers are going to pull a few of Ducks, a disruptor shot. Massive connection, Armani. Wake up, man. What is going on here? Viper pulls another Void Ray. The disruptor shot. Oh my gosh. How many kills was that? One. Eleven. That was 11 kills on one disruptor shot. Ouch. That hurt right in the hatchery. Oh, man. And just making more carriers. We're seeing lurkers come up, which, you know, I, I love lurkers. I said lurkers are very good, but there's really only a couple disruptors, a few zealots. I'm not sure the lurkers are really going to do that much. Well... Will they do more than the Hydras that died to the Disruptors, though? That's a good question. Spore Crawler Wall taking out a lot of the Interceptors. Disruptor Shot connects with one Lurker. Not fatal, though. Maybe that's the real power of the Lurker. It's distractions for the Disruptors. Carrier Fleet is losing a lot of Interceptors here. The Spore Crawler Wall is doing its job. Protoss is going to retreat. Except for the Disruptors, they're not allowed to retreat. You stay in. Loses them all, okay. Does he replace them? He does have one at home. Just, there is another one. There it is. Sorry, had to look under the uh, ten carriers that are here now. This, this is the game. This is the kind of game we're having. Okay. Neural Parasite is on the way. Not quite sure why the hive is so low. Perhaps it was uh, a tasty snack for some vipers. That, was, that would have to be my guess. Additional lurkers coming. I'm not really sure about the lurkers. I feel like at this point, now that we're up to uh, 13 carriers, it's about to be. The problem is the carriers. We need something else. Something other than Hydras, maybe Corruptor Viper, Infestors, can work well. You gotta burrow them, though. Burrow them, get underneath the carriers here. The Spore Crawler Wall can only hold for so long. Vipers, moving forward, they are gonna pull a few of the carriers. One goes down, Fungal Growth, slowing another one. Microbial Shroud, used to protect the Hydralisks here. Interceptor Battle, raging. I don't think there's enough Hydras, though. Microbial Shroud's going to wear off. Lurker takes a hit from the Disruptor. He's just not able to stand up to the amount of carriers that are here. Avert your eyes, Zerg players. <clears throat> Eleven more Hydras, six more Infestors are on the way, but the Infestors are not even going to have enough energy for Neural Parasite upon their birth. Queens tr doing their best. They are picking off a lot of the interceptors here. A good fungal from the right side. Interceptors doing what they can. Another microbial shroud's going to be used. And a beautiful fungal parasitic bomb combo onto the carriers. Unfortunately, it's just not enough damage. There's no storm here. There's no void rays. The Zerg player needs Corruptors. You cannot break this with mostly Hydras. The Infestors have been killed off. The, there's only four Queens, and three of them are here. So, that's going to be it. Prince is going to take the game via Carriers. In all seriousness, though, there was no splash damage. There was no Storm. There was no Void Rays. Why Armani did not go for a Spire is beyond me. Either way, gotta hand it to Prince. He did make it work with the composition of his choice. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you found it entertaining or enjoyable, please do let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys have a great day.